Welcome everybody. Also from my behalf, my name is Karolina Koval and I'm a project officer in the Baltic and the North Sea Coordination and Support Action, which is aiming to build the necessary conditions for durable coordination of joint research and innovation in the two European regional seas, so Baltic Sea and North Sea, and uh, prepare for the future Baltic and the North Sea Research and Innovation Programme. One of the important elements of the future programme will be citizen science and enhancing the ocean literacy in the region. So I'm very excited to be here today and tell you a little bit more about our plans. So there is a lot to create a new research and innovation programme. And this is really what is illustrated in this diagram here. So on the right hand side, you can see um, the aims and objectives of what Banos is saying. So do we, we want to achieve with such a programme here, here in the north? And in the middle, you can see some of the work packages, so some of these mechanisms or tools that we are creating at the moment in the programme to ensure these successful outcomes in the future. And one of these important tools or enablers that will allow us to reinforce the long-term impact of the research and innovation in BANOS is citizen science. So here we are aiming to use uh, citizen science a little bit as a tool to get more out of research and innovation. Uh, as planned. And at the same time, this offers us an opportunity to make everybody more knowledgeable about our shared seas and oceans and make it our joint uh, effort to ensure that the sustainable future of these seas are uh, preserved for future generations too. So this is, uh, these are some of the important elements that we are uh, aiming to uh, focus and achieve in BANOS in terms of ocean literacy and to get everybody involved and on board. We all enjoy a sunny day on a beach and we all benefit from the coasts and the seas, for example, for recreation, relaxation and also for employment opportunities. Therefore, knowing how this very valuable part in our lives is, do is doing is so, so important and how we can help with our own ways to ensure that everybody also in future can benefit from the seas and the coasts and enjoy them to their fullest form. Here we need research about the seas and the coasts and how we all contribute to its current state. We can also develop new innovative ways and solutions. And then we can think of the ways how we can regenerate and protect the seas and the coast. And here everybody can contribute. For example, by making environmentally friendly choices in their everyday lives, regarding the washing powders that they are using, the clothes that they are buying, and the food that they are consuming. So the key aims for citizens' stake in BANOS are to engage citizens in the research uh, process in many, many different ways, get them to contribute to the knowledge and data collection, and in this way, to strengthen the ocean literacy and engage the society and their interest and, uh, on the oceans. Let me tell you a little bit more about the BANOS and its strategic objectives. In BANOS, we have three mutually interlinked strategic ob objectives. Being healthy seas and coasts, sustainable blue economy and human well-being. All these objectives are aiming to support and enable us to manage and protect well the seas. We know that there is a close connection with what we do and the health of the sea and the, and the environment and also its inhabitants, the so-called ecosystem. Here, climate also has a profound role, influencing how the sea is doing, but also the seas and the oceans are regulating the climate. These different features must be studied continuously and data collected for evidence, so that we know how to best design the management of the seas and the governance of the oceans, as well as to disseminate the information and increase ocean literacy uh, with the newest information available, all affecting one another, reaching, the, uh, reaching these objectives. So what could this mean then in more practical terms and how we can engage with the citizen and have them involved in the scientific process? For example, under the objective of the healthy seas and coasts, there are multiple ways how the scientific process could in involve the citizens from observations and data collections, for example, on species level, but also including literature or observations and notices of oil spills, lost containers, looking into the bathing water quality, 
uh, by seagoers, but also on beaches. There are also plenty of opportunities for ocean literacy and education purposes. For example, looking into the red list species, so the endangered species, the effects of climate change to local settings, and also the influence of household waste, including pharmaceuticals and water quality. The co-creation with local communities is also very, very important to ensure the true engagement of the citizens. And here it can, for example, feed into the uh, development of key marine policies on litter, for example, and how to better recycle and uh, um, manage waste. Also, against, uh, under the objective sustainable blue economy, we can think of many ways how the citizens could be involved in the scientific process. The expansion of the offshore wind farms and the development of the offshore infrastructure may, for example, create uh, new unknown disturbances to marine ecosystems. And here the local residents and the recreational seagoers, for example, could contribute towards uh, data collection by species observations and mapping of, uh, of organisms close in the close vicinity of the, of the wind farms. We also see possibilities on education, how to choose, for example, sustainable uh, products. So marine living and non-living resources. For example, the consumer choice uh, on, on fisheries and other aquaculture products. And this can be, of course, uh, easily uh, collected via apps and other smart te technology that are becoming very, very popular nowadays. There are also ways to engage with the society to find ways uh, to make sustainable choices together in respect to seafood consumption and to minimize food waste and many, many other solutions, just to name a few here. Also under the strategic objective human well-being, we foresee many, many possibilities for local residents and citizens to get involved in the scientific process, from observations to education, an engagement and co-creation process together with the scientists. Here, local residents, for example, could, do, uh, could contribute by collecting data and observations on impacts of climate change, sea level rise and storm sur surges. Also, there may be many possibilities for blue sustainable tourism that still need to be grasped. And these could be explored together with uh, scientists how to make the local uh, communities flourish. Education on different seafood choices, climate change adaptation and sustainable holidays. And also to engage these citizens in the co-creation process to develop sustainable practices together. And here are just some examples that I have highlighted today, but there are many, many more possibilities and imagination is our only limit here. So today I have been talking about the Baltic and the North Sea Coordination and Support Action, the BANOS CSA, but similar initiatives are taking place all over Europe. The Blue Med in the Mediterranean, Anchor and the Auro CSAs in the Atlantic, and the newest initiative, the Black Sea CSA, about which you will hear very shortly a little bit more in a follow-up presentation. All these CSAs are part of a European uh, regional sea basin strategies, and in future, they are going to contribute towards a climate neutral, sustainable and productive blue economy partnership candidate that is likely to be funded under the Horizon Europe, the next European framework program. And before I finish my presentation today, I would just like to acknowledge uh, who, are the, uh, who are behind the Baltic and the North Sea coordination and support action. So who are the consortium members, partners and observers behind this initiative? And these are the research and innovation funders of the Baltic and the North Sea um, area. Also involved are the strategic partners, of which uh, include environmental commissions, the Helcom Commission and the Orspar Commission. The International Council of Exploration of the Sea, Seas, the ICES and the JPI Oceans. Important observers are also Academy of Finland, Belspo and the Commission. And if you would like to know anything more about the Baltic and the North Sea uh, and coordination and support action, 
or the future activities and plans for the uh, innovation uh, research and innovation program. I strongly encourage you to uh, go and check out our website. Look for the latest news, follow us on Twitter, or you are always more than welcome to send us an email. I'd really like to thank you for your attention today, and I wish you a lovely day. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Anka Gyorge, and I'm a Public Events Coordinator and Project Coordinator at Mare Nostrum NGO from Romania, actually located in Constanza on the beautiful Black Sea coast. In the last years, one of the exploring area, it was citizen science, which is a very important aspect and useful resources this day, and uh, represent the added value brought by citizen for science, research and policy. In the Black Sea country, this concept is uh, relatively new and included in some projects in the last three years. One of these projects was uh, Anemone, assessing the vulnerability of the Black Sea marine ecosystem to human pressure, funded by the Black Sea Operational Program. Citizen science was uh, used in Anemone project by uh, all involved partners in uh, four Black Sea European countries, Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey and Ukraine. Having uh, in mind the previous experience of the partners involving uh, the activities with citizens, Anemone project offered uh, a very good framework to implement citizen science at Black Sea Basin level. In this consortium, we were four partners, two from EU countries and two for non-EU countries, but the activities were built in order to involve more citizens in common activities. The purpose was to prove that citizens can provide real, useful and accurate data for scientists to use. The project partners involve citizens in two main activities during the project implementation, marine litter monitoring and cetacean monitoring. Actually, these uh, two domains are the one that uh, involve citizens in uh, several activities and the data collection organized by different institutions from uh, Black Sea Riparian countries in uh, different projects. In Anemone projects, over 200 citizens were involved in uh, marine litter data collection over uh, 160 people were trained about how to monitor the cetaceans and over 2,000 people were involved in monitoring and data collection activities implemented actually according to the European methodologies like Marine Strategy Framework Directive. Just by looking at uh, the number resulted, it is clear that um, it would have been impossible to reach uh, such an extensive extent by uh, only involving researchers. Um, and I'm saying this because all these data are uploaded in European and international database with scientific purpose like Emodnet, Marine Litter Watch or OBIS. And um, this is one of the most relevant example on how citizens can contribute and bring benefit for science and how they can help the researchers. The success of these activities with citizens was a short or complex process of public engagement and continuous communication. In order to have a useful citizen science project and to maximize the results for all the stakeholders and beneficiary, it is very important to have a clear and agreed process and to communicate all details to all participants. The direct involvement of citizens in the beach monitoring action and the cetacean monitoring process raises awareness of the current issue in a scientific way, diminishing the effect of media news that presents only sides of reality, most of time being considered as fake news. Moreover, the community created had the chance to interact and discuss with some researchers that explain the way data will be interpreted and how results with, uh, will be extrapolated for the whole area or country. Besides uh, practical activities of data collection, citizens were involved um, in uh, identifying different measures and solutions during uh, several workshops organized in projects like Marina, Marlisco, Anemone, Marlita, and uh, more all, citizens felt more uh, dedicated because they were part of the solution finding stage and in the next part, some of the measures identified will be presented and analyzed from the policy very point of view. Becoming part of the monitoring stage and having the possibility to propose measures and solutions that uh, have a high chance to be adopted give people 
a sense of ownership of uh, an area, an issue or a project. In this way, citizens will ensure the follow-up and the sustainability of the process. Looking at uh, these activities which uh, target the citizen science approach, at the way in which uh, citizens are involved, um, it made me think of uh, other activities that were developed in uh, Black Sea countries long before this concept was defined. We can speak uh, here about the Coast Watch survey, which started more than 30 years ago, designed to give an overview of the states of the coast, working with local groups and individuals around the coast of Europe. The survey has adapted over time with updates from paper maps to modern uh, GIS and uh, was aligned to EU water uh, law like MSFD. For several years, coastal survey was uh, also done in uh, the Black Sea. Actually, Mare Nostrum did uh, this Coast Watch survey for around 10 years. We did this survey with the help of volunteers and educational institutions, identified and catalogued the type of uh, waste presented on the beach. Mainly, the human impact was analyzed in facing the numerical inventory of beach litter. Also, the Standing Monitoring Network is one uh, initiative that um, during the entire year there are conducted systematic observation activities in the Romanian seaside through this network. This program provides annually the collection of data and the um, occurrence of dolphin in the Romanian coastal waters, catches and stranding in the Romanian seaside area and uh, this is implemented for over 10 years with the help of teachers and the educational institutions from primary school to high school. In Bulgaria and Turkey, I built a uh, network that helped to collect data about Black Sea Dolphin using different monitoring methods. Citizen science brings a lot of benefits for society, for science, policy and for the participants themselves. The main benefit of involving citizens in uh, science activities and then in a measures proposal is the fact that people become more aware, directly involved and concerned. So uh, if you're a citizen, just go and find an initiative in your area, uh, in your country and become uh, a volunteer, help to collect data for science, find a uh, proposed measure for policy where you feel to identify better because how you can see your help is very important and you can be part of the process. Also, the researcher, just look at the numbers resulted in these initiatives presented here. It is clear that it would have been impossible to reach this number only by involving researchers. With clear indication, citizens are the most valuable resource that can help you, especially in data collection, which is a long and difficult process for research. If you are a politician or decision maker, just think twice and find ways to involve citizens in finding measures and solutions because this will represent an essential step made to have the actions carried out focused on the real needs of the community. Thanks for your watching attention and just have in mind that uh, despite our file area at the base we are all citizens, even if we are researchers, students, teachers and we can be part of different activities dedicated to citizens.